In this video, I'll be covering jQuery traversing. After selecting an element, traversing allows us to modify our selection. So let's start by looking at the HTML document that we'll be using. We have a H1 heading element, and that's followed by three P elements, and all of these are enclosed within a div element. And after the div element, we also have another H1 heading tag and another div element. And also notice that our second P tag here has a class attribute specified, and we name the class attribute second. Now here is the JavaScript code that we'll be using. And as you can see, we are using a click event with the H1 heading tag. And so this line of code right here will be run whenever a user clicks on the H1 heading tag. And here we're using the selector this, so we'll be applying this CSS style to the element that brought us here. So in our case, the word this will refer to whichever h1 heading element was clicked on. And when a user clicks on an h1 heading tag, then the background will be changed to the color red. And we can take a quick look at this in the browser. So I'll click on this h1 heading tag here, and the background will change to red. I could also click on this H1 heading, and its background will also turn to red. So now let's look at a jQuery method that will allow us to modify our selection. So right here after our selector, type dot, add, and then a pair of parentheses. The add method will allow us to add to our current selection. So let's add a selector for the paragraph tags. Now when the user clicks on a heading element, the background color will change for the heading element that we clicked on and all of the P elements. So let's look at this. So I'll click on an H1 heading element, and you can see that not only its background changed to red, but also the background of the three P elements. So let's say now that instead of adding to our current selection, we want to remove something from the selection. So let's change our selector from this to the P tag. And so now this will select all P tags, and then change the word add to not. And the element that we're going to exclude is the second P tag that has a class attribute set to second. So we specify this by typing P dot second. And as you recall over at our HTML code, it's the second P tag right here that has its class attribute set to second. So now this not method will remove the second P tag from our list of P tags that we've selected. So let's give this a try. So I'll click on the H1 heading tag. And you can see that the background color changed for all of the P tags except the second one. And now we're going to look at a method called next. So we can come back over here and change the word not to next. And then we're also going to change our selector from P tags to div tags. And then the parentheses for the next, we're going to delete everything that's currently inside of them. So the next method will select sibling elements that come after div elements. So if we look at our HTML code, we have this div element, and the next sibling element that comes after this element is this h1 heading element. This h1 element and these three p elements will not be selected because they're not siblings of this div tag. They're children of the div tag. So again, the next sibling element that comes after this div tag is this h1 heading tag right here. So let's try this out. So I'll click on the h1 heading tag. So you can see that the background color changed for the next sibling element after the div tag. So let's try this again but let's change the selector for the div tag to the h1 tag. And this time, 
The Next tag will allow us to select sibling elements that come after H1 tags. So let's look at this. So now when I click on the H1 heading, you can see that the background color changed for this first line of text because it's the first sibling after this heading, and the background also changed for this line of text because this is the first sibling element that comes after this heading tag. So now let's say that we only want to select the next sibling element after our H1 heading tag if that next sibling element happens to be a div tag. So we can do that if we specify a div selector within this next method. So here I'll add a div selector. So here what I'm specifying is that I want the next sibling element after an H1 element if that next sibling element is a div element. So let's look at this. So I'll click on the H1 heading tag, and now the background color only changed for this div element because this is the only div element that came after an H1 heading tag. So if you recall from the HTML code that we have, this text right here was not included in a P element. It was only enclosed within this div element. And we can also use our next method when we've used the keyword this as our selector. And then I'll remove everything from the next method here. So this will select the next sibling element that comes after the H1 element that we just clicked on. So let's look at this. So now if I click on the first heading element, the background color will change for the first sibling element that follows it. And if I were to click on the second heading element, then the background color changes for the next sibling element that follows it. And we can also specify the sibling element that comes before our selected element. For this, change the word next to PREV. And let's also change our selector here to select the P tags. So now we're going to select the sibling elements that come before P tags. So let's try this out. So I'll click on the H1 heading tag. Now the background color of this P tag changed because it comes before this P tag. The background color of this one changed because it comes before this P tag. And the background color of the heading changed because it came before this P tag. And we can also select a parent element. So we do that by changing this to parent. And let's change this back to the keyword this. So now when we click on an H1 heading element, the background color of the parent element will be changed. And if you recall from our HTML code, this is our H1 heading element, and its parent is this div tag. So let's try out this. I'll click on the H1 heading tag, and the background color changed for this whole div tag because this div tag was the parent of this H1 heading tag. So let's look at another method now. And this method is called find. And the find method allows us to get the descendants of the current selection. So let's select the div elements, and then let's specify that we want to find the p elements that are descendants of the div elements. So let's take a look at this. So I'll click on the H1 heading tag, and now the background color has changed for all three of these p elements because they're each descendants of the div element. And now let's look at a method called first. And I'm going to remove the value within the parentheses here. And then I'll also change the div selector to a p selector. So as you know, this p selector here selects all of the p elements. And what the first method does is allows us to only select the very first p element. So let's see what this looks like. 
So I'll click the H1 heading tag, and you can see that the background color only changed for the first P element. And we can also get the last element within a group of elements. So we just changed the word first to last. And now out of the group of P elements that are selected, we're only going to select the very last one. So let's look at this. I'll click on the H1 heading tag, and now the background color has only changed for the last P element. We can also select just a specific element by using an index number. To do that, change the word last to EQ, and then within the parentheses, specify an index number. And I'm going to just use the number one, and the number that is enclosed in parentheses is not surrounded by quotation marks. The index values that we use for this start with zero. So the very first P element that we have is referred to with the number zero, and then the second one is referred to with a one, and the third with a two. So by using the number one, we're actually specifying the second P tag. So let's look at this. I'll click on the H1 heading tag, and now the background color is changed for the second P tag. Remember, if we would have used an index of zero, it would have selected this one, and an index of two would have selected this one. Well, that concludes this video. For more information on jQuery traversing, visit jQuery.com, and you can find the sample code used in this video at littlewebhut.com. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.